I'm not gonna, if you're going to shoot from over there, I'm going to suck my stomach out. Uh, there's no way I can hold my stomach in and me. Um, now I'm all confused. Now I'm all flustered. Protect your back. Protect your back. Body mechanics. Okay. It, it, it amazes me, personally, all the time. When I ask an 80-year-old woman or a man to sit up and on the edge of the bed, and they, they do this number, they sit up like this, and then they spin their feet over. And to me, every time I do that, I say, oh, that hurts my back. So watch her again. Lay down, just sit straight up like in the long sit. See how much work she has to do mm -hmm. through her abdominals and her hips. And then why do I have back pain? Well, I know one of the reasons. There's probably lots of reasons. So go ahead and lay down. We like to teach our people to go through sideline to get to sit. 99% of the time. There are exceptions. Some of our hip replacement people can't roll. Some of our spinal cord injury patients aren't. That's not going to be their most effective way to get up. But most of the time we would prefer you log roll. And so we tell people we want our spine to be in a line. We want it to stay in a line. So how am I best going to do that? I'm going to pick up, bend the opposite knee up. So I'm going to ask you to bend your opposite knee up. I'm going to ask you to reach with this hand towards it here while you push with that leg to roll to your side. So you're going to reach roll and now you're going to kick your feet off and now you're going to push your elbow with your elbow and your hand to sit up so we've gotten her up without twisting her back without rotating her back so especially for our back pain patients and all of those I tell people this is how everybody should get up it's just not how everybody gets up same thing for going back down I would prefer them to go through sideline so I tell them put a hand down and lower yourself down put your shoulder on the ground and put your feet up roll yourself back over. So if they go into that kind of, we learn hook line and half hook line, right? So here's, here's hook line. Um, we were in long sit. And we were over here with the legs off the edge. We're in short sitting. Okay, so we come back down. Come back down. Um, to get her to roll to her side, I can either ask her to go into hook line or to just bring one leg up. And, I would call that half hook line, even though I think I just made that up. Um, and if you push with that foot, you don't rotate as much. So I'll put that on my list with Lita's. <laughs> the one I made up for Lita last week. What was that? The petticoat <laughs> junction. <laughs> junction. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I made that one up, too. So I'm going to start a new. I made up therapies, too. I tell people I therapize all the time. All right, so hook line to get up. Most of the time, we want them to push and reach. The reason that's important to reach, how many times can you go lay up and sit up and lay down, <laughs> um, is that especially when I start getting weak on one side, this arm gets weak and this arm can't reach and push, and people won't be able to roll themselves over. And it's usually because this arm is over here and they're not paying attention to it. So if they're a stroke, sometimes they have to teach them to reach and grab their arm and bring it up here and push with this leg and reach with both arms. Sometimes I just have to remind them, you know what, that opposite arm has to be over here or you're not gonna get up. And it does make a difference. If you were to try to just roll over like that, <laughs> as opposed to going ahead and just bringing your arm across your body, then bring your arm across your body. Now roll, push with your leg, and you come right over. Okay, and then if they push with that down elbow, that's gonna be the easiest. All right, so that's rolling the side. And they can do it with uh, both knees bent as well. You could do it in hook line, yeah. Bring them both up and bring them across. If I'm teaching, and I'll teach you this in spinal cord class, if I'm trying to make it easier for you or to teach you how to roll, that's what I'll usually do is I'll bring them both up, and I'll actually help a little bit. Where's a great place for me to help you roll? Right here. So, okay. So completely relax your mind as much as you can. Okay. So I put this hand here. I put this hand here. I can get you three-fourths of the way rolled over. I get this hand over here. You're 90% rolled over and you didn't even have to do anything. I did very little work, right? And I didn't touch your neck or pull on your arm because I'm never, ever, ever, <laughs> ever, 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 under any circumstances, gonna pull on someone's arm to transfer or to roll them, okay? That's on my back. Yeah, well, you can dislocate somebody's shoulder if they're weak here. How does your arm stay in your, attached to your body? What's keeping it attached to your body? Muscles and Muscles and tendon. skin. <laughs> How many people can name one ligament in your knee? 
ACL, ACL, PCL, PCL, MCL, right. ACL, PCL, MCL, LCL. So there's at least four, right? How many can name a ligament in your shoulder? Nope. <laughs> yeah, but that's uh, muscle. That's right. why they said to stop swinging like little kids from there. Yeah, that's right. my mom's like, don't ever pick a kid up. I don't want to pick this guy. Okay, so my knee, great stability, lots of ligaments. I got two motions, right? For, for our consideration right now, I have two motions, extension and flexion. How many motions do I have on my shoulder? Well, we, we count like four, five, six of them, right? You add in scapular rotation, you've got even more. So you're giving up stability to gain mobility, which means now when my muscles are paralyzed, my arm just hangs there. You'll actually see people where you can put one and two and three fingers between the head of their humerus and the bottom of their, their uh, clavicle here, their AC joint. It stays like from, that. It's just separating just from the weight of your arm. Your arm weighs 10 pounds or so. Mine probably only weighs three, but you know, if you were big and burly like Renee, it'd probably be like 12 pounds. Um, <laughs> just the weight of your arm will start to dislocate your shoulder. So if I roll in here and grab a hold of it and go like this, <gasps> there's nothing holding that thing together but paralyzed muscles, I can actually dislocate your shoulder. So I've never, ever, 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 right? And like I said, you know, I got her mostly rolled over here without even touching her. So now I'm going to grab a shoulder blade to help her finish rolling over if she can't help. 